welcome back to Your Town and the Arts segment, uh, where we really believe the arts are the answer. I'm Paulette, the Executive Director of the Arts Council for Monterey County. And today we are, every month, we're focusing on a different aspect of that idea. The arts is transformative of engaging uh, everyone in deeper learning and connecting with each other. Today we're really looking at the uh, cultural legacy that we have here in Monterey County that's really uh, so uh, has become so iconic really for the, the nation and the world. Um, so we just talked about Ansel Adams and the Center for Photographic Art and how that got underway. And right now we're going to focus on um, the Carmel Bach Festival and that is such has become such an incredible institution and people come here here we can I, I can go outside my my office door and get there but people <laughs> are coming from all over the world year after year after year so we're going to talk with Suzanne Mudge who is the director for community engagement and find out more how it got started <coughs> what else are they doing and ultimately we're going to get to their family concert so, Sue, thank you so much for being here today. You are very welcome, and thank you for inviting us. So before we get all into the Carmel Bach Festival proper, how is it that you have been involved, and uh, why did you decide you were willing to become the Director of Community Engagement? My first Carmel Bach Festival was in 1984, and I was asked to perform as a musician. That's wonderful. Yeah, and so I came back every summer, I missed two summers, um, one due to uh, family events and the other one due to uh, the festival not using trombones that year. Oh. But I've and been where are you coming from? Um, at the time from Burlingame, from oh. the Bay Area. Okay. Uh, and then after that we had moved to Bend, so I was traveling from Bend, Oregon for, uh, for ten of those years. And in <clears throat> the last few years before I became um, a full-time employee, I had been asked to help with outreach concerts and um, um, design programs for, for education, for, uh, for school visits. And I've been director of Tower Music prior to that since 1997. So I was already doing quite a bit with community outreach. And so in 2015, I was offered the position of director of community engagement. What's your favorite part? My favorite part yeah. of, of your job. Of my job. I have to say, connecting with the community, especially working with kids. That's, that's definitely awesome. Well, we're going to um, get to some of that. Let's talk first about the, um, the festival history. One of the things I'm so interested in and intrigued by is that it's really hard to get something started. It takes so much effort, and it can really just take everything that you have. Can you talk about the founders and what drove them to get it off the ground? Sure. So we're one of the oldest music festivals on the West Coast. And we're here because of two women, Dean Denny and Hazel Watrous. And, and I, these believe, I believe we have their photo. Uh, can we show the photo of the founding women? There we are. There so we go. Yes, there you go. Yes. So these and can you say which is which? Uh, Dean Denny, Hazel Watrous. There you go. Uh, these two ladies met in San Francisco. One of them was quite an exceptional pianist. The other one was uh, an artist. And at some point, they decided to come down to Carmel. And when they came down here, they bought a lot, eventually built a house, and decided to settle here. They opened up the Denny Watrous Gallery, and uh, that's located on Dolores Avenue, uh -huh. or Dolores Street, I should say. Um, they saw Carmel as a potential world-class community for the arts, and we'd already we already knew that musicians and, and um, um, artists and, and theater folks were, were mm -hmm. here in Carmel. Mm -hmm. So they decided to start the Carmel Music Society. Oh, I see. And that was oh, in right. 1927. Wow. And the first concerts were in the Golden Bough uh, Theater, yeah. which was then located on Ocean Avenue, as well as in their home. Uh -huh. And then 1935, they decided to start the Carmel Bach Festival. And why is it the Bach Festival? Well, it <laughs> happened to be the 250th anniversary of Johann Sebastian Bach's birth. So it gave the festival a namesake and, and a, sort of a mascot, if you will. Yeah. Um, but music was never limited to just Bach. We've right, always right. I, I programmed music that. from yeah. before Bach and, and all the way up until current day. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Fantastic. That's amazing. And um, so let, let's talk a little bit about uh, the music education. Well, first, let's talk more about the when they started the festival. 
it couldn't possibly have been as big as it's become. So many days, so many sites, so many things happening throughout. Can you talk a little bit more about in recent days, wouldn't they be so proud of, of what has happened, you know, yeah. since, since they got it off the ground? I, I am 100% sure they must have poured everything that they had into getting that started. And, um, and I'm, I'm really quite 100% sure that they would be so proud of where everybody has taken it. Can you talk, uh, we're going to get into the, the student education piece and the family concert piece pretty soon, but uh, for people who may not realize how expansive it is and how many pieces there are to it, you alluded to the tower concerts and things. Uh, and there's just so many things that are, are happening throughout the footprint. Um, give people a sense of what they might find. Let's say they're new and they come for their very first time. Um, what will they see? How do they get around? How do they even figure out what to do? Okay. Well, I should say that the festival started off as a four-day festival with mostly amateur musicians. Okay, that's good to know. So yeah. we're now a two-week festival, yeah. and we have main concerts, recitals, lectures, um, master classes. Um, we have open rehearsals, and we give several community concerts. Yeah. The Tower Music Concert, um, which is considered one of the community concerts, is a short concert of brass music for about 20 minutes before four main concerts. And it's exquisite. That's it's amazing. wonderful. Yes. It's outside. It's outside. It's up on the terrace. I, I, years, many years ago, my son's 17 now, but when he was a baby, I, I could just hold him and, and just be there. and. For, it was exquisite for both of us. Indeed, it's come as you are. People, <laughs> um, you don't have to, to buy a ticket to the concert to come yeah. and, and enjoy. Um, people will bring their beach chairs, their, their dogs, <laughs> <I didn't notice laughs> picnics, what, what have you. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's, it's really a delight. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's part of a, the, the community give back that the Bach Festival has. That's and, um, if wa yeah. somebody wanted to get involved in a master class or they knew somebody that they thought, oh, you should go to this master class, how does that happen? Well, our master classes right now are part of the Virginia Best Adams master class series. Uh -huh. So this is for young professional singers, and they're actually auditioned oh, okay. and invited. So you just can't decide to go to a master class and sing. Not so easy. Um, this <laughs> okay. is a, yeah, it's 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 done way ahead of time. But you can watch the master classes. So okay. if you're interested in watching how our teachers teach yeah. and how our singers learn and the wonderful synergy that um, that that's, that happens, that's created. Um, we have a number of, of master classes that are open to the public, and you and those can. Those are free, also. Those are free, also. Wow. And there's a um, a uh, concert at the end of the festival Is that, that the celebrates the those. No, that's there's a Virginia Best Adams Master Class oh, concert just for the oh, for, just the, for, the, master for, for class. the master wow. class. Yeah. Oh, and, wonderful. Um, yeah. And what's about the best of the fest? Oh, best of the fest. Wow. Um, you know that was started around, um, I think, around the early 2000s, if not before. And um, it's really a culminating activity. It's considered what's the best of, of what's happened in the previous two weeks. So you'll hear snippets from main concerts, from chamber concerts. You'll hear the tower music. Uh, we even, uh, the, the family concert even got a, a pretty good uh, chunk last year. That's good. Yeah, it was, it was great. <laughs> and Paul Goodwin uh -huh. narrates it. So Wonderful. it's, again, it's very laid back. It's very informal. It all can also be very long, but people love it. And um, he brings insight and comments um, before each group performs uh, to give so a little live, bit more content. So it is live, right? It's not a movie of, it's a live It's a live concert. Show. Yeah. It's a live concert. Yeah. That's really extraordinary that you can yeah. do that because it must be really difficult to produce. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a challenge. <laughs> but we've done it and successfully and for many years. And who gets to pick those best of the best? Best of the best. Well, um, ostensibly it was done by audience ballot with a little bit of Bruno uh, weighing in since that's um, bounce, when it bounce, began under exactly. under his uh, under his leadership. Yeah. Um, I think there's still some audience uh, weigh in, but Paul Goodwin does a fair amount of um, the decision making, along with the artistic team. Wonderful. Yeah. So um, and and just just to uh, wrap up the actual details of the festival before we get into the education piece, can you say uh, so? There's some things that are free, and then some things you go to and um, can you, and then there's the best of the fest. You can, my understanding is that you can choose one or two or three, you can kind of create your own system, is that right? Oh, uh, sure. There's yeah. options yeah. to do that. So if we were to go on your website, I could say I want to go to these three, mm -hmm. 
and maybe decide later if I'm going to do something yeah. else, or mm -hmm. maybe I'm only going to go to one. That's exactly that right. right? The, our website has all of the ticketed events listed as well as the free events listed. Um, the only risk you run if you wait is if we sell out. What, which happens, doesn't which it? Which yeah. happens, yeah. 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 In fact, that's already happening for several concerts. Yay. Very nice yeah. for this year, yeah. coming right up. Uh -huh. And what are the dates? Because it is coming up. July 15th, yeah. which is a Saturday, through July 29th. Which is a the Saturday <laughs> night, the which is the best of the fest. So, we have a two-week cycle. It runs from Saturday through Friday, mm -hmm. and then the following Saturday we run the same thing again. The chambers can change from the oh, first okay. week to the second oh, week, so you, you don't have every single chamber uh, repeating in the second week. Um, so there is some flexibility there. Wonderful, and yeah. uh, remind me to. Um, you're using different venues throughout. Yeah, right? our main concerts and many of our chamber concerts are at the Sunset Theater, mm -hmm. uh, which is located in Carmel um, on San Carlos near awesome, 10th awesome and 9th. acoustics, perfect for what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. terrific, yeah. yeah. And then a, f um, a block or two away is All Saints, which um, is the venue for some of our recitals. Carmel Presbyterian um, is also hosting a recital as well as the Virginia Best Adams Masterclass. And then um, San Carlos Cathedral in Monterey has the Thursday 5 p.m. recital. Church in the Forest, Pebble Beach, wow. hosts several concerts. And that's exquisite um, too. You know, each yeah. of these sites is a gem by itself. You know, start. Oh, gem, truly. Yeah, and, and 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 there's a, there's a you know there's a fair amount of history. And uh, we're doing several pre-festival events this year. The Diderot String Quartet will be at Church in the Forest on July wow. 1st. And the uh, Circle of Strings Faculty String Quartet will be doing a, a pre-fest concert on July 8 at Carmel Prez. Wow. And then we have a pre-fest organ concert out at St. Dunstan's that in amazing. Carmel Valley. And Andrew Arthur, our eminent organist at the festival, will be giving a, a concert out there. That is so amazing. And beyond all of that, um, you also do a lot with students. That's part of your community engagement strategy, I'm guessing, or, or the legacy that you all want mm -hmm. to leave and get people involved. Um, so let's talk about, um, uh, and we have a couple of photos of, uh, for this too, a couple of images with students um, and, uh, and learning up, up on their own or you know, with your teachers. Can you talk about, um, like, so what are we seeing right now, for example, how do these students get to this space? So this is um, a photo from Circle of Strings, and this began in 2013. Emlyn Nagai, who's our associate concertmaster, is the director for this. And, uh, oh. Now, Emlyn works mostly in the mid Midwest and back East oh, uh -huh. um, at the Hart College, and uh, he, he's um, you know, all over the place. Uh, but he'll come out for a weekend, and along with other faculty members from the festival, he will lead violin master classes, Baroque training workshops. So you can learn the, the nuances of interpreting Baroque music, understand its performance practice, um, learn how to do ornaments properly, yeah. bowing, all, all sorts of things. So and this must be so great, and it must be so thrilling for the students to have that chance, and I know they love being together as well. Um, so, and how about for this one? Is this, is, is this yourself right here? Yeah, this is, this is uh, myself at Seaside High School. I've, so you're uh, going out. Yeah, for the, and this is um, off season. This is not during the festival, okay. since obviously schools aren't in session. Yeah. Um, one of the challenges we've had with our summer schedule is being able to work with schools. They're not in session in the summertime. Yeah. So the that's been, uh, been part of, of uh, my work is to get us, get us out into the schools. So that was a, a photo from Seaside High School. I've been working out there for the last three years. Oh, wonderful. Um, working with the brass players, yeah. Wow, that is phenomenal. So, um, I know that, uh, so what are your other um, plans for the education piece? You, so you know you want to go out into other schools, you mm -hmm. want to extend that. Uh, how long, how much time do you spend like with the students? Is it for a week or months or? Well this happens? previous Seaside High School experience was a seven week residency. Uh, oh, yeah. I was there once a week for a few hours. Wonderful. <coughs> um, a few but, hours on a block and so a few hours at a time with the same students? Uh, no, with, with two different students. groups. Okay. Yeah, intermediate and, and advanced oh, students. Oh, nice. Oh, wow. <coughs> um, we have a music ed program called Crossing Cultures. What's uh, that? Something that I designed. Oh, great. Okay. And it is for um, assemblies and um, 
coaching clinics with grade four through eight instrumental classes. Yeah. And it's to be administered in um, Seaside, Marina, and Salinas. Wonderful. And this is where we have the essence of STEAM. Yeah. We've heard about STEM. Well, yeah. if we put the arts in Which the we word do. STEM, <laughs> we get STEAM. Yes, and that's do. where things get really hot. <laughs> and this is where it gets really exciting. Yeah. And uh, we are very excited to, to implement this program. It's wow. been a long time dream of mine to have something substantive, uh, you know, collaboration um, that is very cross curricular. So yeah. I designed a 12 page study guide for wow. teachers. They can, they can prep their kids beforehand, anything from audience etiquette, etiquette to what to listen for in a brass or percussion group. And they have individual and group projects that they can have their classes work on as part of their outcomes. Um, and we have a lot of student learning objectives associated with it. So we have that a lot of... That must have taken forever to develop, did it? Um, yeah. <laughs> I spent a good month on it. That is amazing. Yeah. Well, that's really super exciting. Well, we just have a little bit of time left, so I want to make sure that we also get to the family concert. And we do have an image um, uh, with the family uh, concert. And so, um, so tell us, how did these students get there? And I love that they, the seat says reserved. How great is that? Yeah. They must feel really honored and to be there and, and have so much fun all together. Yeah. So this is a picture from uh, one of our family concerts. And I think Yosal um, would be part of that designated uh, section. And the family concert came about because the people at the time sat back and said, gosh, why don't we have anything that's friendly to families, friendly <laughs> to kids? Wonderful. Yeah. We have amazing concerts. We're a world-class organization, but we really didn't have anything that was truly um, a vehicle for which to bring kids to. Yeah. The family concert was born. Isn't that great? <laughs> yeah. So and this is Rasmus. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> So in 2014, I was asked to design a family concert. <laughs> and my first response was, well, let's do something like um, Mozart's Toy Symphony uh -huh. and uh, Peter and the Wolf. Okay. Pretty standard stuff. Yeah. It was rejected. <laughs> Everyone else does that. Let's do something oh, different. Oh, I see, I see. So I created two characters, Leonard, who's an eight-year-old boy, <laughs> and Rasmus, and that's his stuffed his that stuffed horse. That is wonderful. And Rasmus has three passions in his life. He loves music geography, and horses. Wow. His parents say he's too young to travel, so they paper his, his bedroom walls with maps. They say he's too young to, to be a, an orchestra conductor, which is what he really wants to be, so they give him a toy trumpet, and he's too young to have his own horse, so they give him a stuffed horse. You are well, so amazing. This is fantastic. Yeah. So um, I can't believe how creative you've been in, in engaging with our whole community and the families, the kids in schools. It's just beautiful. It's just our honor to, to know you and to be able to share um, some of this and, and also this guy and this <laughs> wonderful image here. And so when people want to find out how can they get involved, um, do they just go to your website first? Is that the best start? They can go to the website. They can call the office. They can stop by the office. And what's yeah. that website address? www.bachfestival.org. Www Org. So, can't get easier than that. And yeah. uh, thanks again for being here today. You are very, very welcome. Thank you for having me.